All right, I hope you guys are doing well. And in this video, we're gonna show you how you can create web and mobile applications using Flowwise and Flutterflow. Now, you already know Flowwise. Uh, it's an incredibly powerful tool, uh, but it can do so much more than just simple chat flows. And so today, we're gonna be using Flutterflow, uh, a low-code platform to basically help us create a, a mobile application that's going to connect to our Flowwise chat flow. And so this is a really cool project because it really gives you the opportunity to customize uh, an interface uh, for your own Flowwise uh, APIs and your Flowwise chat flows. And so this template is based on the ChatGPT web or mobile app. And so you can actually download it using Flutterflow going on the Flutterflow marketplace. And originally what you can do is you can actually just enter your OpenAI API key and you can start using it right away on your phone. But what we're gonna to do today in this video is we're gonna show you how we connect it to our Flowwise uh, API. And so uh, this, is the, this is the app itself. And so what we did was once we downloaded it, we made a few uh, modifications, all right? And so uh, the first thing that we did was we actually added a dropdown window so we can actually connect to multiple chat flows. Uh, and so when you click on one, for example, uh, this goes to a JavaScript rag embedding, you can see the chat flow ID changes. And then when you click on another one, uh, another chat flow with the art of game design book, uh, it actually goes to another chat flow. And so the other modification we made was that we had the ability to uh, switch between dark mode and light mode. Uh, you always have to have that, right? So if we go ahead and just test this out, we're gonna click on the JavaScript uh, chat flow and we're just gonna ask it some questions like, uh, what is the best way to refactor code, All right? And this is actually based on the book, uh, Professional JavaScript for Web Developers. It's a great book. And so you can see that it gives you the answer, right? It's a pretty good answer. And so let's ask another question what is variable scope? Okay, and then it should give us the answer. It's also pretty fast. It's really, really responsive. So as you can see, it already answered the question. So now let's go ahead and uh, switch to uh, the game design chat flow and ask some questions uh, such as, um, what are the elements of game design? And as you can see, it gave us the answer. And then let's ask one more question. I'm designing a tabletop game. What should I consider when it comes to game mechanics? All right. and it is thinking, and it gives you the answer, all right? So now let's go ahead and actually check out the chat flows that this is connected to. And the first one is our JavaScript chat flow. And if we go ahead and check out the, uh, the messages log, we can see that uh, it actually logged our messages, or it actually logged our questions. So what is variable scope? And then what is the best way to refactor code? And so this is also a great way to actually see what's happening behind the scenes and do any troubleshooting if necessary. So and let's go ahead and check out the other one. And we are gonna just reset this. And as you can see, it also logged our questions here as well. So as you can see, you can connect multiple chat flows to the front end of your a web or mobile app. All right, so now let's go ahead and actually look at uh, the back end, or let's say the front end of Flutterflow and see how this all works. So this is a very, very simple app. It's like a one page app and it has our, um, our messaging window here where it lists all of the questions and the responses. Uh, you can see the drop down. you can see the, um, the dark mode setting here. So when you enter your question and you hit the send button, 
it actually starts a sequence of actions that essentially calls the API. So as you can see here, it calls a series of actions that basically sends your, your query or your question to the API. And then if, that, if the API response is successful, then it will essentially update the page uh, with the response. And if it's not successful, uh, it'll actually show this uh, snack bar and it'll say that your, uh, your call was not successful. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna look at where you actually enter your API details for your Flowwise API. And so uh, what you do is it's basically the same as a JavaScript or a core request. And so um, after you click on the API calls tab here, you can see the settings where you can enter your details for the, um, the actual API URL. And then you can set up your variables. So here you see, uh, again, this is for the original ChatGPT. So you can enter your API key if you're connecting to the ChatGPT OpenAI server. Uh, but here what we're actually doing is we're connecting using our uh, individual chat flow IDs. That's what allows us to connect to different uh, chat flows. And then when you're ready to test uh, the actual API call, you can do so here, and then it will actually also show you uh, what the, the JSON paths are. Uh, these are essentially the variables that you're going to use when it comes to updating your, uh, your app. So yeah, this is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, and as you can see, there's so much that you can do with this when it comes to connecting your mobile and your web apps uh, using uh, Flowwise and Flutterflow. So in the next video, we're going to take things one step further, and we're going to create a voice-powered AI assistant that uses multiple agents to do various tasks. So I'll see you in the next video.